In this video, quick tutorial on Base64 and Base64 URL and how we use them in our production code. So first, the usage, very simple. Make sure you have the latest version in your dependencies. We import the general purpose module and the engine trait. In our quick dev main function, we're going to have our original string we want to encode. And here is the Base64 one-liner to do the encoding. It uses the general purpose module we imported, the standard engine, and we will later see how to use the Base64 URL engine. Then we call encode, which is an implementation of the engine trait, which is why we had to import the engine as well. And finally, we give our ref of str. Now the encode document is an as ref of u8 array, which is implemented by ref of str. So we are all good. We do debug print with some alignments, we do a cargo run or cargo watch, and we get our base64 string. Now for the decode, it's very similar. General purpose, standard engine, and we call decode with our base64 string. And the decode function takes a as ref of u8 array as well, which strings implements. We do a debug print. The decode returns a result of vect of u8 with a base64 decode error. We press save and we get OK and the vector of bytes. Oftentimes, we want a string back, so we put a question mark on our decode to get the vector of u8 and then do our string from utf8. Do some formatting in our print, press save, and voila, we get our string back. Now, the cool thing about this crate is that it supports different engines, and one of them is base64 URL. So let's copy the encoding we had. We change the engine from standard to URL safe notepad. We update the variable name, the debug print, press save, and we get our base64 URL encoded. Now, we can see the equal sign, which is a base64 padding, is not present in the base64 URL encoding, and the slash has been replaced by underscore. So in short, base64 URL is base64 with no padding, meaning no and equal signs, slash is replaced with underscore, and the plus with a minus, making the string more portable, and we'll see some examples later in this video. And obviously, to decode, we will just use the same engine, URL safe notepad, and call decode. And then we will get our vector of u8. Okay, so some production coding considerations. First, why base64 URL? Base64 is already quite portable. You can put it in JSON values, in XML, in cookies, and so on. However, since it has slash, plus, and equals characters, it can cause problems in URLs. So that is where Base64 URLs comes in. Now, it can be used safely in URL path without escaping any characters. For example, we can put it as a path component to serialize some code or signature for a password reset URL. And that works well because it does not have a slash character. And it works in URL parameters as well. So in this example, we will use it to serialize some key or signature for an email validation URL. Now, personally, in the application code, I tend to normalize all of my base64 serialization to base64 URL that maximize portability and avoid any doubt about which engine is used where. And typically, I add the suffix underscore b64u for clarity. We will see later in this video some production code examples. Now, the second and actually most important Base64 consideration is that Base64 is not encryption. It has nothing to do with security. Base64 is just a well-known, relatively performant way to encode and decode a byte array to and from a relatively portable character set. And Base64 URL is a little bit more portable than Base64. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So for all intents and purposes, Base64 is clear text. So if we want to serialize a secret in a text format, we encrypt it first and then we Base64. Okay, so let's see some production code examples from our Rust NX web app production blueprint. So first, our approach is to wrap Base64 encoding and decoding in our UTS module. This way, we narrow down to what we need and normalize everything. So we import our Base64 module and trait. In our encode function, we will use the impl as ref pattern as well 
as sometimes we want to encode byte array directly, for example, for keys. And then we use a base64 URL engine and call the encode function. So this function is mostly a pass through. For the decode function, we narrow it down to just take reference of str, which is what we need for our application code. And then we have the b64u decode that returns a vector of u8, which is useful when we want to decode keys, for example. And then the b64u decode to string that returns the string, which obviously uses our b64u decode function. Now, both of these functions map to the base64 error to our own utils error, fail to base64u decode, as we do not need or even want to capture more information like the source string, because by default, we do not want to capture potential sensitive information that could end up in our server log. So the default path is a safe path. So in our production code, one place we are using those functions is to serialize our token for our web token authentication. A token has three parts, the identifier, the expiration, and the signature. And all of the three parts are base64 URL encoded. Today, we use this token scheme for our auth web token in our cookie, for our auth resolve authentication axiom middleware. Now, for cookies, the token could have been serialized using regular base64. But the nice thing about base64 URL encoding is that later, we can use the same token scheme for password reset URLs or sign URLs. And we won't have to change anything. We can just use the same serialization scheme. On the implementation side, super simple. We have our token. Only signature remains basic for URL as we are matching it as is anyway. But both identifier and expiration are in clear in the struct. Then we implement from str for parsing and display for to string. On the display side, we just call our utils encode function on the identifier and expiration, and our signature is already base64 URL. And then we format the three parts. On the parsing side, we implement the from str, we get our token string, do some splits, and then do our decode to string for the identifier and the expression. And we map the utils error to the corresponding token error for debugging. And our signature data is already base64 error, so we just do a two string. And that's it for our token. We have our token that can be serialized and parsed with base64 URL. Now, another place where we also use base64 is for our keys. For example, for password and token keys that we use for hashing our password and tokens. They are both arrays of U8s that are serialized as base64 URL in the environment variables. By the way, in this context, we are using the cargo config to ML, but in a production setting, those will be defined as Kubernetes secrets or config map. But either way, they are accessible by our code as environment variables. So in our config.rs module, our config struct has a password and token keys as vector v8. So when loading our config, we have a little convenient function get env as vector u8. That function just calls our utils decode with a get env, and we map the utils error with our config error with more context. And that is the name of the environment variable. Now, here again, we do not want to capture the source string as we do not want sensitive information ending up in our server logs. And that's it. That is how we use base64 URL in our production code. You can find more information about the crate and this video on rust10x.com slash crate slash base64. Rust10x.com is a new hub for production coding. Much more to come. Big thanks to all my early patrons. You are making a big difference for me for continuing my journey. Thanks to Crabdiblab for the sponsor as well. Until next one, happy coding.